We are now going to begin the adventure of the Clutter Kokoro with our favorite character, Mr. Soseki, in it. I begin to think, Wilson, said Shuns, turning his head languidly in my direction. That there is more to this case than that which we have observed. Indeed, that there may be another part to this story that we are yet to discover. His eyes wandered, following the steam rising from his cup of herbal tea, leading him to the distant memory of that snowy evening. To the young lady collapsed on the pavement along Briar Road, and to the knife in her back. Lit in the soft glow of gas lamps, a most extraordinary scene had been set. And under the cover of a light fog, the curtain had risen silently on the insoluble mystery of our invisible killer. Nineteenth of February, nine forty-seven a.m. British Supreme Court, Lord Chief Justice's office. Did you sleep last night, Mister Naruto? No, not at all. It was an enormous hotel, wasn't it? The rooms were so luxurious. I felt like we were staying in a palace, and with all the gas lights twinkling. It was brighter than day, even in the middle of the night. What about the enormous beds? After my time on the SS Brea, I wasn't going to waste a single inch of that space. I spent the entire night rolling from one side of the mattress to the other. <laughs> Not row, though. Oh, yes. It really was the sort of night you can only dream of normally. Except... When I learned that we owed three pounds for the rooms, that dream quickly turned into a nightmare. Oops. Sorry about that. The building was so impressive, and the entrance so inviting, I just... wandered in without thinking. In a lodging house in Japan, that sum of money would put a roof over your head for a whole year. Wow, a pound was worth a lot back then! I did try, but I'm afraid I couldn't help my tears when we were presented with the bill. Ugh. I really am sorry. Well, never mind. We must find some more affordable lodging straight away, though. If we're not careful, our entire stripping, our entire stripping will be used up in ten days or less. Ugh. London is a scary place. Ah, good morning to you at this early hour. Sir? Hello? Oh, yes, um, we, um, well... Great with your greetings, as usual, Naruto. Good morning to you, Lord Chief Justice. We have come to report on the outcome of the trial at the Old Bailey yesterday. Sato-san's amazing. She doesn't bat an eyelid, even in the presence of the imposing Lord Strongheart. Yes, I believe you had a very comprehensive intuition. Initiation into British courtroom practices. Oh, yes, it was very... eye-opening. Thank you. And, in accordance with your instructions, Lord Strongheart, Mr. Naruhoto performed his duties to the end. Yes, I've already been appraised of events. You conducted a remarkable defense. You may consider the test passed. Oh. No longer are you a student from the Empire of Japan. You may henceforth claim to be a fully-fledged lawyer. My country is delighted to welcome young talent from such a remote eastern land. Um, thank you very much. So, I'm a lawyer now. Now, in view of your new appointment, I have a fresh case in mind for you. I'd like you to take it on at once. I trust that won't be a problem. Another case? Already? Nothing trains a lawyer better than practical experience. I'm sure. I don't sense dissatisfaction, do I? Hi, Charlotte! We just started case four. It's just that 
yesterday's trial ended unusually. I haven't quite come to terms with it. What's what's to what's to come to terms with? The man was cleared. What more were you hoping for? Longstroff! Longstroff fart! <laughs> the culpability of the defendant has not, at the present time, been established by this court. Consequently, the jury will not be required to proffer judgment. Well, Lord Van Zeeks, it's been a pleasure, so it has. And as for you, my dear fella, I couldn't have asked for a better defense. <laughs> Screw this guy! <laughs> Screw this guy! He destroyed my 3DS! I just can't help wondering if Mr. McGilded really was innocent. Mr. Narahodo, it's just that I never managed to ascertain the truth. And then the trial ended. He has the toppest of hats. Well, you needn't let it trouble you for a second longer. Sorry? I like how, like, in the, in the English version, most of... So whenever, whenever Naruhodo says sorry, uh, usually in the Japanese version, he's just saying eh, like as an E-H a lot of the times. And I'm noticing that most of the times when he says that in the Japanese dialogue, it's been switched to sorry. Which kind of works for him. I, I'm okay with that. What do you mean, Lord Strongheart? Magnus McGild had passed away, immediately following the trial. No! What? M Mr. McGild is... dead? I have 19 minutes and 41 seconds until my next engagement. Time enough to talk. Does that include me presenting my arm man? Because, you know, I'm gonna present the arm man. <laughs> Lord Strongheart, may I show you this? And it's gonna be the same dialogue. Okay. Bye bye. All right. He's just got the same dialogue again. Hmm. Is there anything new over here in the dialogue? Okay, nothing's new there either. I'm just checking to see if there's any new dialogue since the last time we were in here, but there isn't. I don't understand. What happened? How can he be dead? After the trial concluded yesterday, there was a great commotion in the Old Bailey. As you'll presumably recall, an omnibus had been wheeled into the courtroom. Yes, of course. That was the scene of the crime which Mr. McGillet had been accused of. Precisely. Well, while the bailiff's attention was diverted by some other matter, the omnibus went up in flames. No. How could such a thing have happened? That is being investigated as we speak, but already... The police have identified a corpse found inside the charred shell of the carriage as that of Mr. McGilded. That's awful. The man must have slipped inside whilst the bailiff's attention was elsewhere. That bailiff really needs to pay more attention. <laughs> How could that have happened? That is also being investigated as we speak. Thinking back now, immediately after the trial, Mr. McGilda did mention going back into the courtroom to look at the omnibus. Well, I must be making tracks now. It is time for the inspection. Sorry? What inspection? Well, they're going to examine the omnibus again, so I'm told. I asked if I could be present for it myself. An inspection of the omnibus. Not to my knowledge. I don't believe Scotland Yard had any intention of re-examining the carriage. But then who was Mr. McGillick talking about? 
Never mind that now. The Yard is making a thorough investigation. This is- this matter is no longer any of your concern of yours. Leave it to the police. Poor Mr. McGilded. So, how did you find your first taste of our country's Supreme Court? Stressful. Oh, well, um, I don't know. I mean, it was... Wow. <laughs> Way of words, not wrong. Mr. Narhoto means that the whole experience was steeped in the solemnity of the Great Britain's long history. It's really a world apart from our own judicial system in Japan, which is only a few short decades old. Wow. Susada-san has such a way with words. And you seem to have a way of failing to find the right ones. And also a mind reader! The judicial system here is the most advanced in the world. Learn all you can. The most advanced in the world, is it? It was fortunate. That your very first trial was a simple affair. Simple? That was simple? <laughs> okay, what, I, 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 don't, I can't imagine what's hard. As I believe I mentioned yesterday morning, it was a trial you couldn't lose. I don't mean to be contrary, Lord Strongheart, but... The case was anything but simple. The circumstances of the case were so incriminating, I was stunned when I first heard them. In fact, I'm still finding it hard to believe that we managed to get a favorable verdict. <laughs> is... is something funny? No, no, my apologies. However, the fact is that... You did receive the not guilty verdict you set out to achieve. And that can only be attributed to exceptional talent. Wouldn't you agree? Well, I don't know about that. Well, never mind. You exceeded my expectations, I freely admit. That much, at least, is an undeniable truth. Which is precisely why I have prepared the new case for you that I mentioned before. What's going on? What was he going to say before? Could you perhaps give us some more details about the new case you mentioned? And make sure it doesn't start like in two minutes or something. Don't tell me. It's a murder, and the trial starts in ten minutes. <laughs> Naruto's got me! Don't worry, it's nothing so alarming or quite so urgent as your last excitement. In fact, this case is completely different. Oh, I see. Did, did he just read my mind? That is to say, no one has died, as yet. Yet? And the trial will not be today. There is plenty of time to research the case thoroughly. 23 hours. 43 minutes, and 19 seconds to be precise. Ah, <sighs> So the trial's tomorrow, then. Is everything alright? Oh, yes. I'm just a little confused, that's all. Yesterday's trial was... Well, it's left me wondering if I'm really cut out for being a lawyer. Oh, Mr. Narahodo. I don't know if I could face standing in that courtroom again after M Mr. McGilded's trial. Ah yes, I nearly forgot. There is one similarity with yesterday's case. Once again, there is currently no one to advocate for the defense. Oh! If the situation remains unchanged, the trial will start tomorrow with the defendant unrepresented. And if that happens, I need not remind you of the inevitable outcome. The most terrible end awaits the defendant. Yes, that's right. Ugh. Here we go again. Your time is up. You will have to excuse me. I would advise you to begin making preparations for tomorrow's trial. 
I wonder if that's the case in actual Victorian history. After all, the clock is ever ticking. There is now but 23 hours, 26 minutes, and 39 seconds until the court sits. Last time he mentioned the 23 hours, he said there was plenty of time. <laughs> and one more thing, Mr. Narodo. There is something I should like to ask you. Oh no, I know what- Um, what's that? Yesterday, you remarked upon something. That you intend to see through the will of your late compatriot, Mr. Sogi. I don't want- This is a test! I would be interested to hear what exactly you mean by that. Inside- Inside 34 seconds. Oh, well, uh... Kazuma always used to say, you see, that he wanted to learn how the greatest justice system in the world worked, so he could change ours in Japan. Now that he's gone, I like to work towards that myself. And there's another thing. Oh! Another thing. Continue. On the way here, on the steamship, he said something to me. There's something very important that I have to do. Something very important. And what exactly would that be? He... He never had a chance to tell me. I suppose he would have done if he... You're out of time. Well, thank you for an enlightening discussion. Mr. Narahodo, what's all this about? Mr. Asogi never once mentioned anything of the sort to me. I urge you both to focus your attention on the matter at hand. I've taken the liberty of summoning the police inspector in charge of the case. He'll be able to apprise you of the details. The irony that it's Gregson after we just talked about what the heck Asogi was here for. If you know, you know. How long has he been there? So, I wish you the best of luck, and bid you farewell. There's something very important that I have to do. Kazuma... Kazuma-sama... What did you mean? I wish I knew. But honestly, he never told me. Anyway, we had better talk to the detective. Don't you think? Yes, you're right. I hope I'm just imagining it, but I wouldn't say he looks pleased to see us at all. <laughs> I mean... Um... Sir? With your fish and chips? Oh, fish and chips in HD! Now I'm hungry again! Um, could we trouble you? What do you think? That... Uh, um... Lovely weather, isn't it? What's the weather's got to do with anything? Uh, listen to me, you young Japanese upstart. Some fibbery about the weather doesn't get every English gent eating out of your hand, you know? Ugh. Gregson's theme! But Susada-san told me it was foolproof. I'm a busy man. A very busy man. Well, you're busily eating, that's for sure. There's a crime scene to investigate, but I'm here having to give the likes of you a talking to. Oh, I'm ever so sorry. Can you imagine what the other officers there will be saying, hmm? I haven't seen Gregson anywhere, have you? No, he's too busy with the bigwigs, they say. And all because of some bumpkin who's there, who's here on a jaunt from a country I've never even heard of. Here's that ripping sound. That's my reputation at the yard going to tatters. Gregson, that's not my fault. There's no need to rip us apart as well. I don't believe we've been introduced. This is Mr. Rianoski Narahodo, a defense lawyer. Eh? It's a pleasure to make your acquaintance. I'm Mr. Narahodo's judicial assistant, Su... So It's lovely weather we're having today, isn't it? <laughs> Gregson! <laughs> uh, 
It's an unseasonally fine, I grant you. London's winters don't see a lot of sunshine. Unbelievable. How did she pull that off? It's the execution, Naruto. The execution. So, uh, Lord Strawheart has asked me to fill you in on the case. The name's Tobias Gregson. Inspector Gregson to you. I'm from Scotland Yard. Gregson? Um, Inspector Gregson? What's the matter with Susato-san? It's the brown one that's sticking out further out than the chips. Does this detective's name mean something to her? Well, first... Oh, I... Okay, fine. I thought I could present something to him. Oh, well. Inspector, are you perhaps... THE Inspector Gregson? You're acting like you know this man, Miss Sasato. But he's a London detective. Oh, I do know him. Very well, in fact. Very well? Yes, he's featured pr uh, prominently in The Adventures of Sh Herlock Sholmes. Oh, in that publication. What's it called again? Rance Magazine? That's right. Inspector Gregson and Mr. Sholmes enjoy a wonderful, friendly rivalry. Friendly, huh? Really? You rival the great Mr. Sholmes? That's incredible. Oh, uh, well, I don't know about that. Mr. Sholmes isn't a professional like myself, of course, but he does come up with the goods from time to time. Mr. Sholmes is equally complimentary about you, Inspector, isn't he? You've earned his highest praise. Gregson is the pick of the bad... Gregson is the pick of a bad lot of all the Scotland Yarders. Those were his own words. That's his highest praise? Well, Mr. Sholmes isn't particularly known for giving compliments, you see. That he is not! And thanks to that magazine, my name's known all over London town now! That's great, isn't it? <laughs> I have to admit that to start with, I was a little... Well, flattered by the, all the attention. Everyone wanted to shake my hand, and my reputation at the yard went through the roof. Well, that's wonderful. No, it's not! There's nothing more sinister than a man on the street! People are always looking at me now. They're whispering rumors about me under their breath, I'm sure. Rumors? Are... are you quite sure? He's changed since he started appearing in those stories. The fame's gone to his head. Stuff like that. Gosh, do you really think people are saying such mean-spirited things about you? Like I said, they whisper. So I can't catch exactly what they're saying. But I know what folk are like. I'm sure that's what they're saying. As sure as eggs is eggs. I get the feeling this detective could be very hard work. Oh dear. Perhaps a sudden rise to fame does change people. So, um, about the case that the Lord Chief Justice mentioned before. Nothing to tell, really. As far as we're concerned at the Yard, it couldn't be simpler. Oh dear. That probably means... As far as we're concerned as lawyers, it couldn't be more complicated. I wish you were wrong about that, but I have a nasty feeling you're right. <laughs> that detective eats fish and chips every day. A young woman was walking along the pavement on Briar Road when she was stabbed from behind. Fortunately, it wasn't fatal, but she still laid up in hospital, unconscious. That's despicable! What sort of coward would attack the poor woman from behind? I suppose you would have finished whoever it was off with a societal takedown, would you? That is neither here nor there, Mr. Narhodo. Brace yourself, Ryanosuke. You've angered her now. Anyway, after some of a whirlwind investigation, the criminal was arrested. He barely had time for a cup of tea after the incident took place, to be honest. So... There must have been something left at the scene that led you to... led you directly to the culprit? Or perhaps a reliable witness who recognized the person in question? Let me stop you right there! You're wasting your time on this one. S sorry? There's nothing you can do. 
There's no way to help the bloke now. Why ever not? Simple. The prosecutor that's been assigned to the trial tomorrow is Lord Baroque Van Zeeks. Again? No! Sounds like you heard of him. Oh, yes, we are very familiar with Lord Van Zeeks. Believed to be the harbinger of death itself. The Reaper of the Bailey. Hey, we'll drink my water now. Lord Baroque Van Zeeks. Who we faced in court only yesterday. Mr. McGill had told us about him before the trial, didn't he? I do not want to keep voicing Mr. McGilda, please. When Van Zeek stands for the prosecution, they call the accused his sacrificial lambs. And in every single trial in which he's been the prosecutor, the accused has been damned. The Reaper of the Bailey nickname. I suppose he earned that because every defendant he advocates against is found guilty. Is that it? Well, if that's the case, we should inform you, Inspector. That in yesterday's trial against Lord Van Zeeks, Mr. Naruhoto secured a verdict of not guilty. Ha! And what of it? Oh! Well, um, I think... Why am I getting pinged? I'm sorry, I've been pinged and informed. So, uh, there was a thing on Twitter. Someone was organizing some flowers to be sent for a, as a thank you for release for the Great Ace Attorney, and the producer has received it. I just saw the picture, and it's adorable. Anyway, <laughs> sorry. I it was good thing I kind of stopped to look at that because that's really sweet. That means that even against the Reaper of the Bailey, it's not impossible to save the defendant. No, you really don't have a clue, do you? What do you mean? What happened to that bloke in the end, eh? He's dead. Ah. Uh, Magnus McGirded came a cropper into that, in that omnibus when it went up in flames. So you can't rightly say you saved the defendant, can you? What? What are you saying? Look, if Van Zeeks could get the dirt to stick on everyone, he'd be a miracle worker. But that's not how it goes. He doesn't work miracles, he works magic. Black magic. I'd have a good long think about that if I were you. Are we really supposed to believe that? Right, well, I filled you in as requested, and I'm very nearly out of chips. You're certainly full of fish and chips because they keep refreshing. Not, well, not the chips, but the fish. It keeps refreshing every time. So I'll be heading back to the crime scene now. We're still carrying out a few investigations there. It was Briar Road, you said, didn't you? Where the incident took place. That's correct, ma'am. And if you head over to the holding cells, you can meet the criminal himself. You've branded him a criminal already? If God gives you fish... <laughs> he's as good as... he He's as good as... Shaky like a leaf in a shell, he is. Shell. Cell. It'll give you a chuckle, if nothing else. I'm not gonna laugh at him! He's inmate 53. Speak to the jailer and he'll show you the way. Inmate 53. Thank you. So there's no helping anyone against the Reaper of the Bailey, they say. Is something troubling you, Mr. Naruto? To tell the truth, when I recall the trial yesterday, I can't stop myself from shaking. The idea of facing the Reaper in court again is... Well, if you think it's too much for you, there's no shame in turning the case down. 
That takes courage, too. But if the man they've arrested is innocent... You could well imagine he would be shaking like a leaf in his cell. And I, for one, wouldn't find the sight of that funny. So... If I'm honest, I'm still reeling from the shock of yesterday's events myself. And I'm really not sure if I'll be able to help this man, whoever he is. But I'd like to try. So I think I'm going to make some in inquiries. Will you help? Did you really think you had to ask? After all, I am your Jujitsu assistant. Thank you. So then, shall we? Yes! Let's go! How about we go to the prison cell first? Let's meet the great Soseki. If he's here. 19 February, local prison, cell 9. So these are British prison cells. Oh, they're ghastly. It feels just like a dungeon. Yes, and having experienced it in Japan myself, I can assure you that our wooden cells feel a lot cozier than these cold stone walls. Oh, don't, Mr. Narhodo. You're making it seem worse. Apparently, our client is in this cell here. But it's so dark at the back there, I can't make him out. I wonder what he's like. Inmate 53, your legal representative is here to see you. Stop hiding at the back of the cell and show your face at once. Am I... Am I a cat? As yet with no name. Calling me by a number. It's utterly, unbelievably, unjustly unreasonable. I refuse to answer! Mr. Narahodo, what... What do you think is going on here? I have no idea. But I wasn't just hearing things, was I? That tired of complaints was in Japanese. Soseki! Uh, they called it jail. Whoops. But spelled like this. Shh! Quiet! They're all around. Hiding! I know they are. They're watching. Listening. Even now, I... I can sense it. <laughs> um, right. So... Could I ask who- There you are! You've come to curse me, haven't you? Don't try to hide it! You're a ghost! A ghost? Soseki? We mean you no harm, prisoner-san. Are you- Prisoner-san! <laughs> are you Japanese, by any chance? <laughs> this is- This is- BEYOND MY WILDEST DREAMS! Ah, Soseki's theme. Forgive me for that outburst before. I'm so sorry. Oh, it's fine. We were just a little surprised, that's all. Imagine it! It's been 12 long months since I left my hometown, and here I am, in a frightful fix in a foreign land. So hearing the sweet, sentimental tones of a compatriot's voice here in this damp, dark hellhole was a, a most monumentally moving moment. Oh, here we go. Who could have guessed that this new client Lord Strongheart assigned to us would turn out to be a fellow Japanese? Ah, what compassion my fellow countrymen show. To dispatch a first-class lawyer all the way from Japan to defend a mere foreign student. Noble, nurturing, never falling, Nippon! <laughs> uh, a first-class lawyer? Oh dear, I think there's been something of a misunderstanding here. I wonder, would you be so kind as to tell us what's happened? Why you've been detained as a suspect, for example? Oh, yes, yes, I can, I will! Set, say, solid, and silent! 
I'm not quite sure I understand what he means, but he seems happy. Yes, he does. I just hope he actually has a good reason to be. He saw the both of us. Of course he's happy. Thank you for your cooperation. I'm a lawyer, as you said. My name is Ryanosuke Narahodo. And I'm Narahodo-san's jujitsu assistant, Susato Mikatoba. I am a visiting student sent here by our government. Nobly, notoriously named Natsume. Soseki Natsume. Can I present my badge? I mean, my arm man? Here's my arm man. Yes, yes, the symbol of one of our greatest empire's first-rate lawyers. Which means, of course, you'll stand by my side. You'll defend me. Oh, no. Sorry, that wasn't why I was showing it to you. <laughs> then why else would you show me that? Oops, in hindsight, that probably wasn't the best idea. Holy crap, he shouts so much. <laughs> my voice is going to be murdered. Soseki Natsume. Son? What an unusual name. Call me Soseki, please. I am a poet, you see. A writer of haiku. It's something of a, a nom de plume. A nom de plume? You mean an alias? That's right, Narada san. No, no, no! Don't be so prosaic! It's much more refined than that! And haiku. That reminds me of home. Did I hear you say that you were a visiting student sent over here by the government? Yes, yes, that's right. A year ago, I was told to go and study English. First, I had to suffer the misery, and now this. It's beyond the pale. Suffer that misery? Did you not want to study here? No, I mean, I've had an interest in Great Britain for some years, of course. Oh, oh. But, just because the government tells you to do something, does it mean you can do it? No! What do you mean? If they told me to study English literature, that I could have understood. That's my field. But no, they told me to study the English language. Utterly, unbelievably, unjustly unreasonable. I see. Only the other day, I was told to send a report about my first year here. I tendered a blank piece of paper. Wise words of white washi! You must be a man of great standing. Oh yes! So I'm often told. <laughs> and often like to be told, it seems. Could you perhaps tell us exactly why you've been arrested, Soseki-san? I didn't do it! I didn't commit that atrocious murder! Murder? Oh, uh, no, 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 it's alright. The woman didn't actually die, did she? Oh, sorry, but she was stabbed with a knife right before my eyes. Before your eyes? You mean you saw the attacker? I didn't see anyone. What? If I seen the person who did it, do you think I'd be locked up in here? Oh dear. It seems this case is becoming rather complicated. Why me? Why me? Why did that silly woman have to be stabbed in front of me? It's the curse. The curse of London. It's incredibly, excusably, irritably inconvenient. So Soseki-san was there at the scene, but he didn't see the attacker. It's vital that we find out more about the case. It was an accursed evening, just after the snow had started to clear and heavy with fog. I'd been to the bookshop to buy some books, and I was on my way back to my accursed lodgings. Sure, the bookshop wasn't accursed. <laughs> Sure, the bookshop wasn't a curse, too? <laughs> so I was walking along that accursed pavement. I could make out the sole silhouette of another ahead of me. A woman, 
wearing a green overcoat, she was. And just as I went to overtake her, she suddenly let out a scream and collapsed onto the heart, the cold hard slabs of stone at my feet. How terrible. I called out the woman, but she didn't move. It, it was like a ghostly, ghoulish, grim graveyard. Slight exaggeration there, perhaps. I was terrified. I had to get away from there. So I ran as fast as my legs could carry me back to my accursed lodgings. That's not good. They'll, they'll say it was shameful, I know. They'll run away like that. Tell me, Soseki-san, was the victim an acquaintance of yours? Don't be ridiculous. Do you think I know of any of these fair-haired English? And a young woman at that. I'm diffident, shy, timid, unsure. I can't talk to people. Man, Soseki's a mood. Screenshot. I, I see. A young woman. Unknown to Suseki-san. And at- Hi, Sarah, how you doing? And at the time it happened, who else did you see nearby? Did anybody pass you? Regrettably, apart from myself and the woman, I didn't see a soul. No one? Oh, great. So the victim was unknown to you, and there was nobody else on the street at the time. That creates something of a conundrum, doesn't it? Hmm? What conundrum? The flowers are so sweet, and I love the setup for it. I gotta check the tweet later, because I want to read what he said. What do you mean, Susara-san? What's the conundrum? Well, if what Soseki-san has told us is true, there's something I can't explain. He says that he didn't know the victim, and that there was no one else at the scene. Then he apparently fled without having been seen. I did! I did! But if that's the case, surely this man has to be the culprit? Ah! You! What did you just say? I said nothing, it was all in my head, but apparently everyone can read my mind. Oh wait, he mumbles. N nothing, I, I didn't say anything. Oops, perhaps I thought that a little loudly. That's right, it's been confirmed, he sometimes mumbles. Actually, that's not what was troubling me. What I was thinking was, how did Soseki-san actually come to be arrested? Sorry? He didn't touch the victim, and there was nobody at the scene to see him. So how did the police ever discover that he was there in the first place? Oh, yes, she's right. It's... It was him! That accursed great detective! He led the police to me! Of all the bad luck! A cursed great detective? Could it be? I shall never forget that man's name as long as I live! With his haughty laugh at his self-proclaimed greatness! Bad, brash, big-headed, busy-bodied... I did not see the last word. May you be cursed until the end of your days, Hairlock Sholmes! I... I knew it! <laughs> Hairlock! Miss... Mr. Sholmes? Hair... <laughs> Even that... <laughs> Screenshot... <laughs> Well, I didn't expect to hear that name from this man's lips, that's for sure. It was morning after that nightmare had unfolded on the pavement before me. I was gnawing on a silver of a sliver of hard cheese when some men suddenly burst in through the door. They started shouting at me. This is the police. Put the weapon down. Yes, it was a thin it was a thin sliver, and yes, it was hard, but I wasn't eating a weapon. Disgusting dietary discrimination devils! <laughs> Soseki the Russian Revolutionary. You clearly had a trying morning yesterday. And there he was, in the middle of all the policemen, grinning like a Cheshire cat. 
that Herlock Sholmes. It's it's actually Herlock Sholmes. He's English. I've since found out that he's a famous name in detection. Uh, in detention. In detection here in London. Oh my God, English. Yes, the great detective is really very very well known. And his overly sharp mind managed to deduce my whereabouts, apparently. He thinks I'm the knife-wielding madman! Me? This weak, stooped kitten of a man! I wonder what great deduction process led him to this conclusion this time. Do you mean to say that Mr. Sholm's deduction was the only reason the police arrested you? That would be really most unreasonable. Well, uh... Well, the thing is, I was... I was thrown into a panic when they barged their way in. Of course you were. That's only natural. I was terrified, trembling, and they kept throwing questions after question at me in impossible English. Fiendish foreign film flammery! <laughs> well, we are in England. You can't really blame them for questioning you in English. Good point, good point. But my mind went blank. I... I knew I had the answer, but I didn't know what to say. So I just kept repeating things like, Yes, I do, and I'm fine. The next thing I knew, I was in manacles. And before I knew it, I was thrown in here. Oh dear. I'm afraid that's hardly surprising. I'm fine? He's not fine now. <laughs> Narahodo! <laughs> Mr. Narahodo Esquire! Oh. You can just call me Narahodo. And when we're speaking English, a simple mister is more than enough. Oh, yes, um, all right, yes. They've, they've really got to me. This country is poisoning my mind. <laughs> Narahodo Esquire, though. But please, I beg you to defend me in court tomorrow. You can tell them what really happened. You'll do it, won't you? Well, uh... Why? Why? Why is it so hard to say yes to me? Well, the thing is, I'm just a student like yourself, on a study tour. A... a student? I have defended a case in the Old Bailey. Only the one, though. But at this moment in time, I really don't know what I'm supposed to believe in. Technically, you've had two trials. It's fine, Naruhoto. I'm... confused about what justice in this country even means. Oh, Narahodo-san. I'm not even the foreign student who was supposed to be here. I'm... a sort of locum lawyer, I suppose. Locum? But, but that arm man! That's the mark of a defense lawyer from a great empire! Poor Narahodo thinks so little of himself so early on, and I'm just like, I just want to pat your head. It's a keepsake from the man who should have been here. He was my best friend. Uh... A keepsake? I know exactly what they're saying about me. Oh, who do you mean? The lawyers. All the British defense lawyers. They won't defend me. Goodness, why, why do you say that? For the same reason as you noted before. When it happened, there was only the victim and myself around. And I ran away from the scene of the crime. I'm not a fool. I know it looks as though I must be the culprit. It must be very hard for you, Soseki-san. In any way, I'm a student from overseas. I'm just a foreign nobody to them. Someone not to be trusted. I heard them openly laughing about me before, in my earshot, without any compunction at all. Any trial for this man would be a waste of time, they said, and of course the foreigner did it. They even had the gall to say the man doesn't understand half of what's being said anyway. That's awful. They're wrong! I've studied more English than half of the policemen out there on the streets! I've traveled halfway around the world to learn about these people's country and its great history. But... No one here wants to listen to a man with a strange accent. They all hate me. So, at the very least, I like to entrust my fate to someone who can listen to me in my native tongue. 
Oh, Soseki. You could do it, couldn't you? When I look into your eyes, I can see it. I can see that you've been what you've been through. Soseki-san, it's just that... I need time. Give me a little time, please. Hmm? I'll do what I can, for the time being. What do you mean? We shall investigate the case as thoroughly as possible. If we can find some clues, it will give us a much better chance, I'm sure. Oh, yes, yes, thank you! I'll be here, all alone, waiting for you! Welcome, student, Mr. Narahodo Esquire! <laughs> That's a mouthful! We should be going then, Narahodo-san. We have a case to prepare for. Alright, well, let's go to Briar Road. <laughs> that was such a mouthful, though. 19th February, Briar Road. What the heck happened to that poor bike in HD? Hey, a snowman in HD! <laughs> so this is where it happened. Briar Road. Ah! Look, Mr. Narahodo! Look at the regulation metal helmet! It's unmistakable! The men of Scotland Yard are here! They're investigating as we speak! Oh, she's excited. That is their job, you know? But Mr. Narahodo, to see one with my own eyes! They're often depicted in the adventures of Herlock Sholmes, but I never dreamt I'd come to- i come this- I'd ever come this close to a real bobby helmet. What? The- the helmet? <laughs> of course. I have to try one on one day. Well, I hope your Hattie dream comes true. <laughs> Gregson's just like, what the hell? What's the Japanese delegation doing here? Oh, Inspector Gregson. This isn't the, on the tourist trail, as I'm fairly sure you're well aware. Well, yes, of course. We're here to investigate. So you've been uh, to the holding cells, then. What do you make of the criminal? He's not a criminal, as you put it, Inspector. He's a suspect. <laughs> well, we'll see about that. You Japanese like to stick together, I suppose. Dang! Forget about picking a bro, man! Look at Gregson being an ass! Well, do what you will. It doesn't bother me. The bloke's in court tomorrow, whatever happens, and the verdict's a foregone conclusion. Ugh, stone-cold air of rejection. Take heart. London at this time of year is full of stone-cold air. That makes it worse somehow. Hi, Gregson! Can I present my armband? Yay! Inspector Gregson, could I show you this? Am I supposed to know what that is? I've never seen that insignia before. It's worn by defense lawyers in the Empire of Japan, as a symbol of their profession. In other words, it's a worthless trinket here in Great Britain. No, it's very important to me. It, it shows my spirit. An English gentleman keeps things like his spirit very much to himself, I'll have you know. Oh. Don't give up, Mr. Narahodo. It's too late. He's crushed my spirit already. <laughs> da -da -da. -da 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 -da. Tell me about Scotland Yard, Inspector. Ever since I read about it in the adventures of Herlock Sholmes, I've been fascinated by the place. The Yard is the most sophisticated policing organization you'll find anywhere in the world, ma'am. Oh, and you know, I've always dreamed of wearing a real Bobby's helmet. It does make them look the part, seeing that policeman there with his helmet on. You certainly get the sense that this is a man who will take no nonsense in his duty of protecting the city. <laughs> Best waifu. Oh yes, doesn't he look wonderful? Being a London Bobby is hard going, I can tell you. Oh, really? First thing in the morning, you are- you know what he does? Goes round and rouses all the laborers on his beat, so they can go off to work. What? 
He wakes people up? Yep. Raps on their windows with a long pole. Long pole. Did it myself. Going back a bit. I had no idea. But Bobby works for the people of the town. It's just another one of his duties. After that, he starts tirelessly patrolling the streets all day long. He has to cover 20 miles a day. That's the regulation distance. I can't really imagine how far that is, but it sounds like a long way. Let me see. 20 miles? That's approximately the distance from Tokyo to Yokohama. On foot? That's... That's definitely taking things a step too far. And when it gets dark, of course, he has the important job of lighting all the gas street lamps. Oh my! And I suppose in between all those duties, Bobbies are expected to investigate cases as well? A chase after criminals trying to evade the law. And chase. I'm not sure you could call it in between exactly. More alongside, but yes. That's... That job sounds exhausting. They're expected to handle those jobs as well. We do have men keeling over from time to time, I admit. Y you guys might need to fix your work ethic. I'd always dreamt of wearing one of those helmets, as I said. But it's with a heavy heart that I shall have to relinquish that dream to you, Mr. Narahodo. What? Why me? Your heavy heart will be my heavy head if you do. <laughs> it happened at around 5 in the evening, two days ago. Just there, on that open bit of pavement. The victim, a young woman, was stabbed with a blade from behind. Is it right that the lady is still unconscious now? You mentioned that she's being treated in the hospital. I never said she was a lady. Truth is, unless she comes around pretty... Sh she comes around pretty smartish, we won't be able to find out much about her at all. I suppose that means they haven't been able to take a statement from her, of course. Why don't... you know, this case is so silly. They could have just waited for her to wake up and be like, Yeah, it wasn't him. Here's a map of the local area. I happen to have on me. You can take it if you want. Really? Are you sure? It's Yard's policy to keep Laura, to give Laura's defending suspects the odd bit of information to go on. I haven't actually accepted the job yet, but still. Thank you, Inspector. We gratefully accept. Local map. A street map of the local area showing where the victim was found. Anyway. As far as we know, there was no one else on the scene other than the victim and your fellow countrymen. So who did it, do you think? Not much of a head-scratcher, is it? Well, I know Mr. Natsumi is also claiming not to have seen anyone else around, but... But just because he didn't see anyone... It doesn't mean we can be sure that nobody else was present. I'm sorry to have to tell you, but we most certainly can be sure. How? Because, ma'am... The precise moment of the stabbing didn't go unnoticed. It... what? We have two very reliable witnesses, no less. Oh, welp. It was a typical foggy London day, and your client obviously didn't see them. There were witnesses now? Boy, this stack, this po this case is piling against us, as always. Who are these witnesses, Inspector? A fellow and his wife, and the man's one, one of the most reliable, respected citizens in all of London. He's a copper from Scotland Yard. Ah, uh. uh, a policeman. That might change things. And this policeman just happens to be there at the exact moment the woman was attacked? Nothing peculiar about that, ma'am. Part and parcel of being a bobby. Catching him, catching him them banging the act and all that. Um, do you think it might be possible for us to ask that policeman a few questions? Be my guess. You can ask him what you like. In court tomorrow. What? Why? Oh. I've no doubt he'll be summoned as a witness. So that'll give you something to look forward to. What is this, a game? That's that, then. He's got no intention of letting us meet the man beforehand, it seems. 
A policeman witnessed the incident. As your digital assistant, I must warn you that this could make our job very difficult indeed. Yes, as a non-judicial assistant, I could have warned I could have warned me of that too. Oh, yes, one more thing, Inspector. What? The person who led you to the suspect. I hear that was Mr. Herlock Sholmes. What are you bringing him up for? Was it something I said? The color is drained from his cheeks. Well, we'll talk about Mr. Showman in a moment. Tomorrow's trial. That twitchy Japanese blow goes on trial tomorrow. Are you going to offend him or not? Well, um... Well, it's just a type of... Uh, the word haiku? Or just what is haiku? Makes no difference to me, but I will just say this. No London lawyer worth his salt would touch that case with a barge pole. Because the prosecution is being handled by the Reaper of the Bailey, you mean? Um, it's three, it's three lines of, of poetry, and I, I, I couldn't Google it. <laughs> I could not describe it exactly. There's no way to save the man now. It's a waste of time trying. It is all a bit strange, though. Sorry? The Reaper. He hasn't appeared in court once for a good few years now. Yes, we did hear something to that effect. And the only people he usually bothers with are the real scum. The master criminals. The violent ones. The master criminals? The, the violent ones? That's right. He handpicks his victims. Only deals with those guaranteed to go to the gallows for their sins. But Mr. Natsumi wouldn't hang for what he's accused of, surely. That's just my point, Sunshine. Sunshine! Yes, the young woman was stabbed, but it didn't kill her. Couldn't even say the intent was there. So this isn't the sort of case I'd be expecting the Reaper to want to sink his teeth into. For what a better phrase. Well, it's not exactly a minor infraction, is it? No, there's got to be more to it. Some reason he's taking an interest. Really? What sort of reason, Inspector? You think I can tell what's going on inside the head of that Lord of Darkness? <laughs> Lord of Darkness! You'll have to ask him yourself at tomorrow's trial. Are we really going to have to face the Reaper again? The Lord of Darkness, as he puts it. <laughs> yes, we are! You know, I think... I don't know if it was because of Soseki or not, but, like... If Baroque was already assigned to it, and it's been implied that he's interested in taking these cases because Naruhoto has taken... has gone onto the defense bench, it's kind of, the timeline is a little mixed up in this case because Narahodo was hasn't even accepted it when it was already established that Baroque was going to take the case. Who did you hear that name from? Oh, well, um, it was Mr. Natsumi who mentioned it. He said that Mr. Sholmes was with the police when they entered the lo his lodging. I'm sure it was the result of one of Mr. Shum's inspirational great deductions. Fiddle faddle! <laughs> Fiddle faddle! <gasps> the man's an amateur, and I'm getting sick and tired of him showing his mug everywhere. Oh. I don't know where he gets his information from, but he turns up at the scene of the crime, wanders around spouting incomprehensible rubbish, and before you know it, he claims to have solved the case. Yes, he's quite... Astounding, isn't he? He... he is a great help to Scotland Yard, though, isn't he? Gibble gabble! Uh, ever since this... ever seen this before? Oh, yes, that's the Rance magazine. The wonderful publication in which the adventures of Herlock Sholmes appears. Yes, well, that wonderful publication, as you put it, sees fit to include several of the Yard's detectives in its story. 
and the so-called great detective makes a mockery of all of us. If you ask anyone at the yard, it's a misadventure to be included in any Herlock Sholmes tale at all. Well, I suppose there is an element of that. We work our socks off, every one of us, only to be fronted by the public thanks to that obnoxious detective. The man's as dangerous to us as Scotland as to us at Scotland Yard as he is to all our criminals. That can't really be true, can it, Inspector? Clearly the great detective and the police have a complex relationship. Well, I don't think we're going to get any more useful information out of the detective. Mr. Narahodo, can I make a suggestion? Oh, yes, what is it? Well, it seems to me that we must speak with him about this. <laughs> I'm imagining Narahodo just made a face because, like, oh no. By him, do you mean Mr. Sholmes? Yes, Mr. Herlock Sholmes, exactly. Look at those shining eyes. You can't wait, can you? Well, Mr. Natsumi did blame Mr. Sholmes for all of this, didn't he? Yes, he did. Oops. He really did. Which makes him an involved party in this case. Are you just going to ignore that? I hope not. I assure you, it's not simply my selfish desire to meet with Mr. Sholmes again. Y yes it is. The trouble is, we have no idea of the man's address. It's Baker Street! But th how do you know that? It's in the stories, of course. 221B Baker Street. The most famous address in the world. Oh, I see. Well, there's nothing to stop us from going, I suppose. I do not! We better try to find our way there before Susada-san gets any more excited and unpredictable. Hurrah! I shall summon a carriage! So we're going to have a reunion already. With the great detective, Mr. Herlock Sholmes. <laughs> what a delightful snowman! I didn't realize the English had a tradition of making snowmen as well. It looks a little creepy, though. Oh, it has a scarf. Look. You need one if you were out in this freezing cold all the time. I wish I had one. Aww! I'm afraid our budget is somewhat frozen at the moment, too. We certainly can't afford a scarf. Surely the snowman here wouldn't miss his. Not our holdo. But the person who made the snowman certainly would. Yes, I know. You're right. Anyway, even if I borrowed it, it wouldn't do much to warm my neck, would it? It's covered in snow. That's one of the officers from Scotland Yard. The police are making sure the crime scene is undisturbed. I have a feeling that if we wander too close, we'll be clapped in irons. I think perhaps you're being a little overcautious. We've done nothing wrong, so we have no cause for concern. Oh no, I'm not getting caught out again. Twice is enough. Twice I found myself in handcuffs, despite not knowing a thing about what is going on. Oh, poor Naruto! Yes, you've had some dreadful experiences. I'm sure that's... I'm sure it's that wide-eyed look of panic you're so prone to. It does you no favor at all. Ugh. This patch of pavement must be where the incident occurred. Yes, it's a very wide open space, isn't it? That's true. I can't see anywhere an attacker could have been hiding. Oi! What are you foreigners doing here? Uh... Oh! Um, uh, we, um, just investigating... Conspiring with that mustache fella from, J from Japan, are ya? Conspiring? Come here to destroy evidence, have ya? Get out of here before we give you in. Give you an Eden. Go on, give you a Eden. A Eden. A heating. Okay. <laughs> he shoot us away like rats. Yes, we should give him a wide berth, I think. What a disappointing experience. What a jerk. 
No, a hitting. Like, he, he was going to give them a hitting. Or like, give them a hitting or a beating or something. Something along that line, I'm assuming. Oh, that's a Scotland Yard carriage. They use vehicles like that to rush to crime scenes and cart away criminals. You're very well informed, aren't you? It's long been a dream of mine to ride one of those through the streets of London. Well, just pick up a stone and throw it through one of the windows then. But that would mean being arrested in order to ride it. Wouldn't it? Still, if that's the only way, help me find a good stone. No, no, I wasn't serious. Hold on. <laughs> Susano! The clouds look so big and heavy in the sky, don't they? Also, London in HD. And with the dense fog as well, everything looks hazy. Well, it is known as Foggy London Town. I could just make out some sort of spire through the fog. It looks like it's still being built, though. Aha! Uh -huh. Yes, that must be the Crystal Tower being built for the Great Exhibition that's to open in six months' time. Apparently, it's going to be very striking. Glazed on all sides, and the symbolic centerpiece of the exhibition. It's to be the largest exposition. Exposition in history, is it? I can't even begin to imagine it. Do you see all the black smoke rising from the chimneys over there? It says here that in Great Britain, many people heat their homes in winter using coal. The only chimneys I really remember seeing in Japan were on top of the bathhouse. Do you think some of those houses could be on fire? D not Not at all. Well, even so. That much thick smoke building up to the heavens is surely going to turn the whole sky black sooner or later. <laughs> Naruto spitting facts. Gosh, you might you may be right about that. <laughs> Oh, look at the windows of that building there. Are you sure they're windows? Yes, but they're all filled in with bricks. Oh, you're right. I wonder why. Perhaps it's an empty property where nobody lives at the moment. There's smoke coming from the chimney, though. Oh, dear. Everything still feels very foreign. There's so much we have to learn about this place. Ah, yes, the bicycle. Oh, a British bicycle. Look. Although, the wheel is so misshapen. I'm sure I couldn't possibly be ridden anymore. Someone must have been doing some breakneck cycling. It seems bicycles have become extremely popular in London recently. There's even a movement to change women's dresses to allow them to ride as well. The bicycle fad won't last. I don't see why anyone would want to ride something like that. Oh, goodness. Do you dislike bicycles? Well, no, not at all. I mean, it's not that I dislike them exactly. It's just that any occupation that involves taking both your feet firm, your feet off firm ground seems reckless. You know, Naruto makes a valid point, but also like this is kind of funny considering Phoenix Wright does ride a bicycle <laughs> to get to work. If you ever tried walking on stilts and fall into river, I know you agree with me. Are you speaking from experience, Naruhodo? Have you walked on stilts? We'll have to hire a bicycle sometime. You can sit behind me while I ride you around. Aww. That's a rather typical old brick building, isn't it? I'm sure it has a long and interesting history. Well, time certainly seems to have taken its toll on the place. It's crooked and sagging all over. In fact, it looks... In decidedly worse shape than the other houses around here. We must find some cheap lodgings ourselves as soon as possible. Yes, you're right. Cheap, but ideally with reasonable level floors. Okay, I think it's time to head to Baker Street. I think there's a cutscene too. Bye, Gregson!
Thank you very much. It's just up there overlooking the street. Good day. Thanks again. This is it. The residence of Mr. Herlock Scholes. I quietly admit I do miss having cutscenes. I really miss cutscenes in, in the second game. 19 February, 12.35 p.m. Shown Suite. We're here, everybody! So this is where the great detective makes his living. It feels surreal to be here somehow. I see my first accolade that I can do. Oh, Susato! Is it as described? In the stories, Miss Susato? Um, Susato san? <laughs> I love how, like, he couldn't get her attention in English, so he went right to Japanese. That's so good. I love that detail. Many, many famous cases have been solved here in this very room. Oh, I. I suppose they must have been, yes. I've never read the story, so it's hard to get quite as excited about it as she seems to be. The detective chases the villain relentlessly as he disappears in the fog down an unlit London street. Oh, the thrill of it! The romanticism! Can't you feel your heart thumping in your chest? Can't you, Mr. Naruhodo? Oh, I... I suppose I can, yes. So, if you don't mind... <laughs> I'll just stand here and soak up the atmosphere for a little while longer. Please don't mind me. <sighs> She's obsessed. <laughs> oh. Well, it looks like our detective friend isn't home at present. Excuse me, is anybody home? Oh, do we have a visitor? Hello, is it a big new case for Mr. Shones? Um, hello. Wait, aren't you... Oh, how rude of me. I'll go and make some tea at once. I'm sure it's the same girl. Mr. Sato, did you see the girl who just passed here? Who was just here? Oh, yes. Isn't it truly extraordinary? To think that the King of Bohemia came to this very room to ask Mr. Sholmes to take on his case. The... the King of Bavaria? Mr. Wilhelm Gostrick Sixman von Ornstein, of course. I am not looking forward to case three of the second game. Sorry, I'm drawing a blank. Forget the adventures of Herlock Sholmes for a moment and look over there. The tea's brewed, and I have a freshly baked cake as well. Oh, it's you! I knew it. Susato-san recognizes her, too. The place is, like, messy, but also very cozy. Ah, there you are! And taking that with you as well. I was looking forward to the trial run of my experimental smoke grenade launcher. Oh, good day to you. I'm, well, the inventor, I suppose, of that machine. It's the girl who turned up at the end of Mr. McGilded's trial in the defendant's antechamber. I've never met a lawyer from- I've never met a lawyer from the Far East before. Poor you. How about to get straight to work when you've only just arrived in London? Oh, yes, it was... challenging. I had tea today, too! Some nice hot tea, because I kind of needed it for my throat. Well, try this tea. It's my special blend, you know? Oh, um, thank you. Is tea supposed to look that color? I assure you it'll taste amazing because it's made by Iris. Oh my, what a fragrant yet mellow flavor. Hooray, it's a winner. I tried blending different leaves designed to alleviate fatigue, you see. You must be exhausted after your long voyage here. And you have another ticklish trial tomorrow. Oh, and you are to defend a Japanese man. I do wish you lots and lots of luck. What? Um... 
did Mr. Sholmes tell you about us by any chance? Oh, you know Hurley, do you? Hurley! Hurley! Oh. I'm sad we don't have Holmesy no more. F in the chat for Holmesy. Hurley, Mr. Sholmes, Mr. Sholmes to you, surely. Mr. Sholmes was a fellow passenger on the boat that brought us to Great Britain, you see. Hurley, would you surely? Was he really? Well, I had no idea. I'm afraid Hurley's out on an errand again today, even though he's just returned from overseas. Wait a minute. We met this girl for the first time ever yesterday after the trial. And I only briefly, and only briefly at that. Sholmesies! Yeah, I kind of wish they went with Sholmesies too. How on earth does she know so much about us? Did she deduce all those things, do you think? And perhaps more to the point, why is she here in Ms. Mr. Sholmes' suite? Oh, silly me, I haven't introduced myself, have I? It's a great pleasure to meet you both. My name is Iris Wilson. I've lived here together with Hurley. Uh, Iris, is it? What a lovely name. What? What's the matter? No, wait, this... this can't be. Did... did you... did you say that your name is... Wilson? What's the matter with Sosato-san? Why is she so flustered all of a sudden? Yes, that's right. And what are your names? Oh, um, I'm Ryonosuke Naruhoto, a lawyer from Japan. Oh, sorry. I'm Mr. Naruhoto's Jujutsu assistant, Susato Mikatoba. It's a, it's wonderful to meet you. Lovely, Susie and Runo. Got it. <laughs> Runo. <laughs> Look, I can do a Susie, but Runo. They could've gone with Ryu or Naru, like <laughs> Runo. Runo! Susie? And Runo? Now what's really funny is that in... In the... It, it's kind of funny because they are... In the Japanese text itself, they don't have nicknames or anything. Yeah, Naruti. I like Naruti. That's cute. Uh, but in the Japanese text itself, it actually just says Susato-chan and Narahodo-kun. She never gave them nicknames, they just- she just gave them honorifics. That were, uh... Not appropriate for a child to be addressing them by, but you know. There's more to this girl than meets the eye. I have so many questions for her. I don't know where to start. Yes, and so do I. Okay, but before we do that, I need to get my first acolyte. Get get me over here, please. Thank you. Uh, I've seen pictures of Western musical instruments like this. It's called a violin, isn't it? Of course it is. Mr. Sholmes is renowned for his, vi his violin playing. Oh, really? Absolutely. It's often explained in the stories. It's inspirational, Mr. Naruto. Inspirational. I immediately started playing the koto, which was the closest Japanese string instrument I could find. Oh, I know this story. What a shame you couldn't bring it with you to London. Oh, yes, well... Papa was beaming when I asked him if he would buy me one. But after a while, he asked if I would only practice when he was out of the house. Oof. So, now it's merely an ornament in my room. That must have been an awkward conversation. Second-rate strings, let's go! Alright, one more. This one won't trigger anything, but it will... It's on- it's a step. Ah, that's my blackboard where I write- where I note down ideas. Oh, interesting. Let's see. Black Peter? What does that mean? Don't you want to hear what Iris has to say, Mr. Narahodo? I'll come back to that blackboard later. I do like this fireplace. 
It's one of the best things I've seen since we've arrived in country, in fact. Lingering beside the fire and watching the flames flicker and dance in the grate. Ah, <sighs> it's so relaxing. We can't relax. Not when there's so many interesting things on the mantelpiece. Oh, it's just as it was described in the stories. Is it? It is? Yes, exactly. Inside that Parisian slipper, for example. Are oh, my chocolates for a lemonsies. And transfixed by that large jackknife. It's my shopping list for the market. <laughs> oh, it's not quite how I remember it being described in the adventures of Herlock Sholmes. Poor Susato-san. She looks crushed. A mystery shoe, a curious hammer, some mysterious dancing men, and a bust of Napoleon. Ah, oh, what an entrancing collection. This is the first time in my life that I've seen a lonely old shoe displayed as an ornament. Oh, those are all mementos that Hurley has collected from his past cases. Really? Even the bust? Yes, that's right. When the mood makes... When Root takes him, he likes to throw it on the floor and smash it to dust. The poor, defenseless emperor? Mr. Sholmes destroys it? Hello, DG Shoes! Yes, and then he buys a new one. You make it sound like he has the temperament of an insane sculptor. Oh, how entrancingly bohemian of him. Okay, whatever you say. It looks like that huge metal chest is being used as a table for tea and coffee. It seems very sturdy, with an equally sturdy lock. Mr. Narahodo, you mustn't go around opening things. I always have to keep an eye on you, don't I? You're very mischievous. How did you come to that conclusion? Oh, that chest. Contains some of my most valuable things. And that smile tells me you're not going to give us any clue about what they are. What on earth is this huge, over-the-top machine? That's the crate, Analyscope. It's an analysis thing. Any it can analyze anything, really. Anything at all. That's... that's absolutely incredible. It's one of Hurley's inventions. It took him a whole year. He said he was to help him with his inve investigations. What sort of things has he ana analyzed with it? Do you know? Well, actually, he hasn't used it for anything yet. Oh, why not? Apparently, on the evening he finally completed it, it suddenly occurred to him, I don't actually have anything I need to analyze. Oh dear. How about you, Runo? Do you have anything you'd like to analyze? The only thing that springs to mind is this machine itself. <laughs> Very valid! No, no. No, 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 no. There's all sorts... There's all sorts on these shelves. Chemistry apparatus, books, papers, and... Lots of things I've never seen before. It's all heaped up so high, I can't help feeling that the whole lot is going to topple at any moment. I keep telling Hurley not to cram so much on those shelves. Good advice. He wanted to look something up in one of those books a while ago. But it was so tightly wedged in, he couldn't get it out. So he went and bought a new copy instead. Oh my god. Oh my god, only Holmes. What on earth is that big black lump over there? fascinating thing is called a typewriter. It's a machine that allows you to write on paper without needing a pen. And wizardly quickly, too. Ooh, that sounds like it would be very useful for someone like me with terrible handwriting. Okay, Narahoro has bad handwriting. Good to know. <laughs> That's a charming little white shelf and full of charming little bottles, too. Oh, yes. But don't touch any of those. They might explode. Uh, explode? Are they exotic chemicals? Do you use them for exciting experiments? Yes, 
Yes, indeed. And as Hurley always says, Chemistry is an explosive science. Sorry? I agree. A single discovery can trigger an explosion of innovation all around the world. Or perhaps he just meant it literally. Either way, mental note. Do not touch any bottle that belongs to Iris. <laughs> Very good advice. What a beautiful English tea set. And so neatly arranged. It's a favorite pastime of mine. A cup of herbal tea in the afternoon. Tea made of herbs. That's right. I grow all sorts of herbs in the garden, so I can experiment with different blends. One moment. Don't go away. I brought apart a special blend I came up with earlier today. She looks delighted. I only hope it's safe to drink. Okay, I think that's it. Archery! Ah, oh, bless. First, we present the armband. Iris, could I show you this? Oh, how exciting! What is it? Tell me all about it. Oh, actually, I was hoping you might be able to tell me something about it, if anything comes to mind. Why would it? Well, no, I suppose it wouldn't. Tell me, tell me! I want to hear everything! This hasn't gone according to plan. Talk about your armband! And your best buddy! Anyway. It was you that we ran into yesterday, wasn't it? At the Old Bailey. That's, that's right! You were ever so helpful. Thank you so much. Oh no, not at all. I'm so sorry we couldn't have been more welcoming. Though at the time, we did have a rather large gun pointed at us. Speaking of the gun, really pointed at us. Like this? <laughs> uh, thinking back now, you left with Miss Lestrade in tow, didn't you? Oh yes, that awkward witness, Gina Lestrade. Oh, also Rip. Oh, Ginny? Yes, she's a professional pickpocket. So we found out. It was very naughty of her to pinch my invention like that. Are you referring to that trial-disrupting gun-like contraption? I do not want to eat the bazooka. Please do not shoot bazooka in my face. Exactly. So I followed her, you see, to get it back. Huh. Perhaps I should think about fitting a self-destruct mechanism in my inventions. This girl is dangerous. Anyway, I brought Genie back here after that. Jean oh well, Genie is still Genie. So she could apologize to my trusty technician. Sorry, your technician? Hurley, of course, silly. Hurley. Yes, Herlock. Herlock Sholmes. We live here together. I... I had no idea the great detective had such an interesting young daughter. Daughter? Oh, not likely. What? I wouldn't call him Hurley if he was my father, would I? Well then, what is your relationship with Mr. Sholmes? Well, I expect you found out of that lodging of any... Well, I expect you found out that lodgings of any kind in London are very expensive. So that solution is to share the cost with a partner, a roommate. Your... roommates? I hope you don't mind me asking, Iris, but how old are you? Ten at last this year. Well, what of your mother and father? Oh no, they're not around. Oh, I see. I wonder what the story is there. Indeed, what is the story? Do I hit this thing? Okay, I gotta press this one. Alright, let's go. Oh, yes, there's something I must ask you. Of course, of course. Go ahead, Susie. I am a very great fan of the adventures of Herlock Sholmes and... Oh, you have a copy of Franz magazine. Yes, I've read every issue. It's delivered all the way to Japan on a ship. Oh, 
Oh, this is so exciting! My stories are being read on the other side of the world! My stories? That's right! Hurley is always solving such amazing cases, you see? And he tells me all about them. They really are quite fascinating. It would be such a shame if I was the only one who ever heard them, you, don't you think? Goodness! Last night, he was telling me all about a new case he just solved on a steamship traveling from a faraway land. So I was just in the middle of typing out the manuscript for the next issue for before you came. So you... you are... you are the author. Yes. I'll let you in on a little secret, if you like. I'm going to call the latest adventure, The Speckled Band. The Speckled Band? That's certainly very familiar. Of course, I always change one or two details in the stories, here and there. This time, I've had the idea of making a venomous snake be the cause of all the trouble. Oh. That was Mr. Schoen's first thought as well, actually. Yes, and of course, I know that a snake might not be a credible fit for the facts of the case exactly, but... It's a story! Some poetic license is justified to make it more thrilling, I think. Don't you? So, do you mean to say... Are the stories about Mr. Schoen's that are published in Rant's magazine... All written by me? Yes on my wonderful and very modern top typewriter. But, but all the stories I've ever read are written by a doctor of medicine, Dr. John H. Wilson. So Sada-san's getting more and more worked up. Ah, yes, that's me. I mean, my name really is Wilson. But, but what about the doctor of medicine part? Oh my God, she looks so like her eyes, she's so sad. That's all true, too. I'm a doctor of medicine. No, a ten-year-old? At ten years old? At ten years old. <laughs> she says it with such confidence. Well, that's quite incredible. But, but, but... <laughs> Dr. Wilson is an English gentleman. Ah, yes. I did alter the setting slightly. For the stories to be more compelling. Oh. Well, it sounds a little strange, doesn't it? A great detective with a ten-year-old girl in tow. I suppose it does, yes. Poor Susato-san. She looks like her whole world has just fallen apart. <laughs> Reality doesn't ma the, the, the imagination doesn't match with reality. Oopsies. Ah, that's my blackboard where I where I note down ideas. Black Peter? What does that mean? Oh, how intriguing! It must be the title of Iris's latest work. Oh my! I wonder what fascinating tale awaits us. Susada-san looks like an angel. But I bet she's dreaming of the most grisly crime you could imagine. It's a case that Sh Hurley solved just recently. A black cat called Peter went missing in the neighborhood. Hurley tracked it down at the fishmongers in the end. That's pretty straightforward. Well, I can't wait for the story to be published. Okay, now we've, uh... That's it! I just have to finish this case now. Oh, all the acolytes have been tackled for now. For this case. Um, about before. Yes, yes? What's on your mind, Runo? Do tell me. How did you know that I was a lawyer? And we just arrived in London, I mean. Yes. Oh, and that we have a difficult trial tomorrow. How did you know all that? Oh, that's what you mean. Please, tell us how you did it. Explain every detail. Of course, I'd be delighted. Although, there's really no mystery. Now, let's begin. Iris Wilson is proud to present her Logic and Reasoning Spectacular. <laughs> For 
First of all, I knew already that you were a lawyer, Runo. After all, I met you yesterday at the Old Bailey in the defendant's antechamber. But you also said that we'd only just arrived in London. How'd you know that? I observed a passport and travel ticket protruding from your breast pocket. Oh. So I was reasonably confident that you must have only just arrived in the country. And on top of that... You accepted a case against that particular prosecutor, telling me you were unaware of London's court affairs. The Reaper of the Bailey? I walked right into that one, didn't I? Then I noticed a red ink stamp on the back of Susie's hand. You were given that when you visited the local prison to meet with a, pr a suspect, weren't you? Earlier today. Ah. Uh, they use those stamps to keep a close eye on comings and goings, you see. Ah. Uh, I didn't realize. And a rat stamp is only used for people visiting foreign inmates. So, that told me that even though you had only yesterday concluded the trial of Magnus McGilded, the two of you had already had cause to visit a foreign inmate at a local prison. However, none of you was wearing a particularly sad expression on your face, so I concluded that the prisoner was unlikely to be a friend or a relative. That led me to believe that you must have accepted a new case. I... I see. You know, they've only do Iris's like, logic and deduction spectacular once in this entire game. I kind of wish they implemented this one more time. Just one more time. But how could she have known that the trial is tomorrow? Well, having barely been home a few hours yesterday, Hurley solved yet another case. It's obviously amused him. He told me that he caught a Japanese man who was bawling and trembling. A Japanese man? Well, clearly that must have been... Mr. Nuts, Mr. Natsume. Now, Ruru has that fancy Japanese sword. And I think your outfit is called a kimono, isn't it, Susie? Well, anyway, it was clear to me that you both come from Japan yourselves. So I put two and two together and decided you must be defending the Japanese man Hurley caught. And there was only one conclusion those facts could lead me to. You both came here to ask Hurley about the case. <laughs> Impressive! She did that all by herself! There's a note on the mantelpiece that says the man's trial will be tomorrow. Hurley is always stabbing his notes with a knife, you know. He is silly. And that's all there was to it, really. Thank you for listening. I'm Iris Wilson, and that was one of my great deductions. Josh, <laughs> so good. <laughs> They're so shocked. Well, was it a winner? Were my deductions correct? They... They were spot on. That was amazing, Iris. Truly a great deduction. You even managed the certain something of Mr. Sholm's delivery. Oh, well. I was just copying Hurley's style for that. This is really very good news. You can... You could tell us all about the case involving the Japanese man. You will, won't you, Iris? Please. The case of the Japanese man. So yesterday, Mr. Shoma apparent apprehended a Japanese man. You were saying... You were saying... Yes. Hurley had just arrived back in London after his sea voyage. But the police were waiting for him at the railway station to take him directly to the crime scene. Ah. The great detective is a popular man, it seems. Apparently a woman was stabbed on a quiet street somewhere in town. There were witnesses who had seen a short, shifty-looking, stooped man running away from the scene. A short, shifty-looking, stooped man. Mr. Natsume, beyond any doubt. So Zeki-san said that he didn't see anybody else on the street at, at all. But it seems there were witnesses after all. Harley used his great deductive powers to determine the man's address. It was a lodging room very nearby. He went directly there with the police, and what did they find? A short, shifty-looking, stooped man, shivering in fear. Ugh. Mr. Shove's great deduction certainly hit the mark that time. Of course it did. 
He's a great detective. Thanks for the posture check. My pillow is slipping. Still, that means the incident occurred only two days ago. Surely tomorrow is too soon for the trial, isn't it? Definitely. We have no time to investigate properly. Harley says that London is rife with crime. Oh. Scotland Yard is doing its best, but they can't stay on top of it, apparently. Because they work their beat officers to death! Oh dear. I hadn't realized the situation was so dire. That's why they can't afford to spend too much time investigating cases and trying to... trying the criminals in court. Staff and money are both short. Crimes are usually pinned on the first suspicious person. Man, that sounds about right. That's terrible. I suppose it's the harsh reality of the workings of the world's greatest justice system. I... I suppose it is. But in that case... I don't hold out much hope for Soseki-san. Thank you for answering so many of our questions, Iris. This has been very informative. Oh, you're most welcome. I've had so much fun. Do you happen to know where Mr. Sholmes is at this moment? Are you... as you guessed, we like to ask him some questions about this case as well. Ah, oh, well, I expect Hurley is still investigating the scene. Of oh, the case involving Mr. Natsume, you mean? Yes, Mr. Natsume? <laughs> Natsume! Hurley said he was going to the man's lodgings. If you leave now, you'll probably catch him there. Iris, do you know where those lodgings are? Well, I imagine the police are still investigating the scene of the crime themselves, aren't they? Do you happen to come across a detective by the name of Gregson when you were there? Yes, we know Inspector Gregson. Ah, goody. In that case... Give Gregsy this one, this from me, would you? Gregsy is still the same. Well, Greggy, Greggy said, it was, I think it was Greggy son, but now it's just Gregsy. If you do that, I'm sure he'll tell you what you want to know. What is this? A five shilling piece and a postcard, it seems. Iris's postcard, a card for Inspector Gregson with a message on the back from Iris. It reads, tell the gentleman in black whatever he wants to know. I trust that won't be a problem. Gosh, this will make the inspector help us, will it? Well, thank you, Iris. We'll give it a try. Good luck, then. I'm going to return to writing my manuscript, The Speckle Band. And I'll be making more special blends of tea, so come back again soon. We'd be delighted. Thank you so much, Iris. Well, Mr. Naruhodo, it's back to the scene of the crime. So somewhere dubious that they would exert any influence over the men of Scotland Yard at all. We headed back to the scene with Iris' curious note and one of the world's heaviest silver coins in hand. To be continued! Actually, I think we could probably stop there tonight because it's already 11.30. I don't want to start another one because that means we're definitely going to go into like 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning. And I don't want to do that. 